you've made it past month one and year one without a glitch. But wait, what if there was a glitch? In this video, we're going to go over everyone's worst fear. What if something goes wrong? I know better than anyone that expensive repairs are possible when you own a home. You might do everything right and things will still go wrong. It's what you do in response that's key. I have made every mistake in the book and I'm here to teach you how to avoid them and how to respond to them. This lesson will save you money, heartbreak, and headache. So listen carefully and take notes. It's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. In this lesson, you'll learn how to build relationships with service providers, how to get and vet quality referrals to get the best quotes for your project, and how to calculate how much you need in reserves. First, start building relationships with home service providers ASAP. I've learned that finding the right contact for each system of your house is invaluable. And if you can do this when you don't have an emergency, you'll save thousands when you do. A home emergency is the last thing you want, but the way you start building these relationships is to start your preventative maintenance early. Your home is like your body. Regular checkups will help it run more efficiently for longer. Issues get more expensive as time goes on. So a great way to save money is to spend money up front on routine maintenance. Have, say, a plumber come by for a checkup. You can continue to hire different plumbers for different issues until you find one that you connect with and trust. This discovery process might cost you a couple hundred dollars in small repairs, but you'll be killing two birds with one stone. You'll be shoring up your home's plumbing and finding the savior you'll call if a pipe breaks in the winter. With this preventative maintenance, emergencies are much less likely. You should repeat this process with an electrician, an HVAC professional, and a carpenter. While you find your home maintenance heroes, spreadsheets are your best friend. Has a sexier sentence ever been uttered? Record everything. List the names of the companies, the date, task, the price, and any notes in a spreadsheet so that you don't forget. If you haven't budgeted to have every area of your home checked up on all in one month, do this slowly. Send yourself calendar reminders and stay true to it. It's easy to not think about your HVAC if it's running smoothly, out of sight, out of mind. But as soon as it's July and your AC isn't working, you'll really wish you had a reliable contact that you had already built rapport with. As a good rule of thumb, I like to have my AC unit serviced once a year, and it only costs around $120 or so. Not only does it give me peace of mind, but it will also help the unit last longer. If you bought your home with a partner, decide who will handle scheduling with contractors and vendors so that the ball doesn't get dropped. Home maintenance can feel like a part-time job in this phase, which is why getting organized is so important. Once your homeowner processes are running like clockwork, you'll save both time and money. In my house, my partner is responsible for scheduling maintenance, and if anything comes up, we have a system. We know exactly who to call, and it feels relatively seamless. Big systems in your home obviously have a lifespan, but that lifespan can be extended by quite a bit if you're organized in your approach to maintenance. To best prepare for when things go wrong, you'll need to get some awesome referrals. I cannot stress this enough. Referrals are everything in the home service industry. Leave Yelp for the restaurants. Get personal referrals for your home needs. The home service industry is ripe for corruption. There's a lot of money to be made by making the new homeowner feel insecure or scared of their house. I always recommend getting at least three quotes, especially when you're early in your homeowner career. You'll be surprised by how large the range can be. P.S. We go more in-depth about hiring contractors for fixer-uppers in the investor track of homeschool. I hate to sound like a broken record, but your open house community has plenty of referrals for you. And if not, your realtor should be a referral machine. They'll have a valuable list of vendors who have been vetted by their clients. Contractors and home service companies can be a bit inconsistent. If you have a bad experience with someone who was referred to you, be sure to let the referrer know. You don't want them to keep referring them out when you know they have the potential to provide less than satisfactory service. 
the lowest quote is not always the best quote, but sometimes it is. (laughs) Confusing, right? Let me explain. Deciding on the best quote will come with experience and depends on the job, but the three quote rule will absolutely help you hone this skill, which is why having great people do smaller jobs first is a great way to cut your teeth and to get some experience with the service provider. If they're fair and do quality work on a smaller job, chances are they'll do the same on a larger job. The lowest quote could mean more headaches and eventually more money spent on cleaning up a mess. But ask for the references and rate their communication skills to get an accurate read on the contractor. Every quote is a learning experience. Ask questions. Respond with a level head and don't commit to anything until they've sent you a written quote. Getting something in writing is key to avoid misunderstandings during the job. These service providers have been inside countless houses and they're there to give you information as well as give you a quote. They'll tell you things about your house that you might not have known and they'll open up possibilities that you might not have considered. Avoid freaking out if a service provider comes in with a somewhat doomsday attitude. That's just one opinion. On the flip side, Contractors tend to get a bad reputation. Like homeowners, they too get taken advantage of by people. So while you're projecting confidence, it's important to be fair and kind. It's in your best interest to be respectful. They are skilled professionals and their time is valuable. Third tip to being a savvy homeowner. Stay calm and keep reserves. A home reserve fund is crucial to keeping a level head. Growing up, when anything broke in our house, it was a huge deal because it usually required money that we didn't really have. We would have to divert funds from somewhere else or use a dreaded high-interest credit card. That's why we recommend keeping a healthy reserve fund dedicated to home repairs and, heaven forbid, that expensive emergency repair. The recommended reserve amount varies by region and risk profile. In the South, the AC is one of the most important systems in the house, and the most common emergency repair that we see. Those poor AC systems work so hard over a southern summer. A new HVAC system costs about $7,000, so I recommend that southerners have at least $7,000 in their reserve fund. Again, with preventative maintenance, this is much less likely to happen. If you are more risk-averse, it's important to know that about yourself. If having double this amount in your reserve account will make you feel that much more secure, then you should absolutely save double. If you know what's happening with the systems in your house, you can replace them with some notice. Get three quotes and make sure you're getting the right deal. If it goes out on a 104 degree day, that sucker needs replacing ASAP at any cost. Have you slept in a house when it's over 100 degrees? Yikes. With a healthy reserve fund, your trusty open house community, and a team of home maintenance experts you like and trust, you can handle anything that comes your way. So that's it. You made it to the end of homeschool. This is your first step to becoming a homeowner, a real estate investor, a landlord, whatever the future holds for you. This was the best way to get started. Together, we are living proof that buying a house doesn't need to be scary or unattainable. It's empowering, rewarding, and one of the best ways to acquire new skills, independence, and strength. Because you finished this course, you're going to be the most prepared and savvy first-time buyer there ever was. You also just gained a lifelong community of fellow homeowners. Again, way to go. We are so, so proud of you. Get out there and get yourself a home.